Have you ever wondered what it'll be like to be mentored and taught by RC and Lisa? To be a part of an exclusive group with opportunities to ask questions to RC directly? There is a program called Mordecai Mission. It may be the opportunity you're looking for. Mordecai is a 12-week program conducted on Zoom by RC and Lisa. The program is named Mordecai because it was Mordecai who mentored Esther into her reign as queen. RC has been called the King of Queens. His passion for empowering women is like that of Mordecai. The program is for women seeking spiritual and emotional healing as well as a sense of purpose and a return to self-love. It's biblically based and spiritually empowered. It is roughly an hour of teaching done by RC. It then moves into Q&A. The program is based on three pillars. One, inner healing. Two, self-discovery. And three, self-development. The program runs for 12 weeks straight. Meetings are at the same time every weekend. The meetings are about 90 minutes to 2 hours. To be a part of the next group, go to www.rcblakes.com and register. Seats are limited. Pray about it. And if you feel a witness in your heart, don't procrastinate. Go ahead and register. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Hello, 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 hello. This is R.C. Blakes, and I am excited to be able to share with you once again tonight, as you know, I always am. It's such a privilege and such an honor to be able to speak into your lives. Now, I really need you to help me because I need, I really need um, every woman that you can think, think of to be in this conversation tonight especially every single woman. We're talking tonight about six boundaries that every single woman must enforce when dating. Six boundaries that every single woman must enforce. This, I mean, this is not, this is not optional. These are things that, um, the things that I'm going to list for you tonight are things that you're going to have to intentionally enforce as it relates to boundaries. And one of the big problems that I'm seeing in relationships today from the woman's perspective is that um, there are no boundaries. The world has, has really made you believe that, um, you know, somehow your value is tied to you know, having um, any kind of man on your arm, and it's created a, a desperation for situationships. These are not even relationships because a relationship goes both ways. The two relate one to the other. But what many of you are uh, settling for now are situationships because the world has made you believe a few things. It's made you believe that the older you get, the less valuable you are. If you're not a certain size, you're not of any value. Uh, if you do not have a man by a certain age, um, somehow your value has been depleted. And so because you buy into all of this, you become so desperate that you, you really relax all of the standards. You see, because boundaries represent standards, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but boundaries are the evidence of self-love. Any woman that does not have uh, and enforces boundaries, it is a clear indication to any um, 
you know, any skilled deceiver that this is a woman that lacks self-love. And when people lack self-love, they're searching for love in all of the wrong places. You see, all of this stuff has created within you um, the idea that somehow, and I want you to hear this, that somehow you need something or someone outside of you and God to create some sense of worth. And whenever you have to, please hear this, whenever you have to look outside of you and the creator for a sense of worth or value, you are setting yourself up for abuse and misuse because the moment the world realizes that there's something lacking in you and you're looking to anything in the world to fill that void, the world will take advantage. And so the evidence of you having this, you know, this self-love and this self-concept is that you have boundaries, certain of which uh, you will not compromise. Uh, boundaries also separate pretenders from, um, you know, the real deal, contenders, pretenders from con contenders. You know, a man that is not a contender is not that is not authentic and genuine. He's not going to want to put in the kind of work and effort to deal with a woman that has certain boundaries. And I'm not saying that you need to enter the world with some difficult kind of energy. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not taking nothing. I'm not taking. No, you don't have to say that. You can you can you can be polite. You can be feminine. You can be. Um, agreeable and at the same time, no, 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 no. Enforce your boundaries. Um, boundaries sustain your individual clarity. Because how many of you can attest to the fact that you've lived your life without boundaries and it's because of some of the reasons that I just mentioned and you've entered into one situationship after another and you got so entangled with these people, so, so soul tied that you lost your individual clarity. You gave up on your dreams. You gave up on your personal vision. You stopped realizing what you really wanted. You stopped realizing what your individual life is really supposed to be all about, and you started pursuing someone else to the extent that you lost yourself because you didn't have boundaries. Boundaries help you to sustain individual clarity. Separate and apart, you know, I'm clear on who I am, my worth. Right now, as I'm talking to you, my wife is out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, without me, she and the kids out of the country without me. And um, man, you know, she's cooking for me. She's going to be gone like 10 days. She's cooking for me, trying to make certain that I had enough food here, you know, to sustain, <laughs> to sustain myself until she got back. And man, the time started winding down for her to leave. And I have to tell you, I got a little anxious. I said, man. Oh, I'm about to be gone for like 10 days. And then when she gets back, I won't be here. I'm going to be off somewhere out of town. And it'll be like 14, 15 days before we actually see one another again. And then I, I, I started feeling a little anxious. And then the Holy Spirit said, well, now you got to live all that bad talk you be teaching <laughs> about individuality. But when you, when you maintain your boundaries... You maintain your individual clarity. And so many of you have lost that because you just got entangled and entangled. And, you know, you, you don't know where where this person begins and where you end. You, it's just a ball. It's just you just twisted up into knots. 
And then boundaries preserve time. When you have boundaries, boundaries save you a lot of time. When you have, you know, I ain't going this far, you know, that that's the whole point of, you know, the virtuous woman's price being far above rubies. A price tag is a boundary. Like those of you that have businesses and everything, you can't keep doing your business for people for free. You know, people keep on using you for free to my we friends, we family and all of that. No, no, no. You got to set your price and hold your price because boundaries preserves time. A lot of people you wasting time with and you trying to you trying to entertain these people because you, you're not enforcing any boundaries. And what it's doing is it's preventing you from really reaching your true market. When you enforce, when you have boundaries and you enforce them, it saves you massive amounts of time. Time that would have been wasted, you know, like you, you know, you don't have any boundaries. A, a, a dude that will be hanging around for the next two, three, four months trying to figure you out. When you have boundaries, he already understands that you know who you are. And then boundaries reveal unrealistic expectations. Because if a, if a person can't follow, you know, a simple instruction relative to you and your personal space or what have you, uh, it makes you understand that your expectations that this person uh, can be a leader, can be a covering, can be a husband are unrealistic. Unrealistic. Now, there are five areas, five areas where a single woman in my opinion, must have what I call hard boundaries. You know, we have some boundaries that we can relax a little bit, but these areas that I'm getting ready to share with you now are hard boundaries. These boundaries are like, you know, you have the, you have the, the silk rope boundary, you know, you have the chain, chain link fence boundary, but then you have the stone wall boundary. That's a hard boundary. The, the, the silk rope boundary can be, you know, it can sway from one side to the other, the chain link fence. It's, it's you know, it, it gives and it, what have you. But that, that stone wall is a hard boundary. No one's coming through that. And so these five areas are not silk rope boundaries. They're not chain link fence boundaries. These are stone wall boundaries. Now, one of my favorite texts, you know, when I, when I talk to women, I love to use this text. It's not me saying it. It's the Bible. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, says, uh, now you, you read the context, the verses coming before it really describes a generation of narcissists. And then in verse 5, it takes up saying, having a form of godliness, but denying the power there from such turn away. Verse 6, for of this sort... The narcissistic type are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust. Lust or what? Intense wants. But notice it says these men creep into houses and lead captive silly women, women without dignity, without self-respect. But they creep into houses. And the question came to my mind, well, how do these guys creep into the houses? How do these narcissistic men creep into the homes of these women? Clearly, their doors and or windows were not secure. Their boundaries were not enforced. And so they, they left the opening for these men to creep in to lead them captive based on their desires and wants. And so as you sit and you listen to me today, um, it's silly for you to live your life as a woman without any hard boundaries. Now watch this. I want you to just take a moment to to actually think about what are my boundaries. Most of you are going to have to scratch your heads because you really, 
You don't, most of you don't, a lot of you, should I say, don't have any boundaries. This is why you keep getting any and everything, because if you don't have boundaries, you know, come on now. We have a, a raccoon that lives in the neighborhood and, you know, we can see him on the cameras, man. This joker just will not leave my house. He just hangs around the house and at nighttime, he's just walking around the house. And, you know, the other day I saw I saw paw prints on the, the glass door to the yard. Raccoon paw, paw prints. Well, he was trying to come in the house, but he couldn't get in because the door was shut. The door was even locked. When you live your life as a woman without boundaries, it's like living without doors. It's like living without windows. Don't, if you don't have windows, if you, if you just leave a window open, don't be surprised if pigeons fly around your house. If you leave your doors open, don't be surprised if raccoons and cats and dogs, randoms, just run through your house rampant. Now, these five areas, number one, every woman, every single woman should have as a hard boundary your children. You cannot allow a man to play, to toy with, or to use your children as pawns. In my book, The Father-Daughter Talk, we talk about um, uh, certain kinds of characters that men play when they see that a woman is, is needy of, of male attention. And one of those characters is Captain Kidd. This is the guy that you know, sees you in church and he knows how much you love your children. And so he slides in like he loved the kids or he's looking at your social media and he knows where you work because you put everything on your social media. He knows where you go to church. He knows where you shop. He even knows what day you he knows when you're going shopping because you tell the whole world, I'm going to be over here at this grocery store. And so he slides in. And he acts like he just loves your, that's Captain Kidd. Every wise and queen conscious woman establishes unrelenting boundaries around her children. You can't be so desperate that you throw your children in the mix. You, 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 you're not supposed to be, you're not supposed to be so desperate that you, you having random dudes coming through your house with your babies in the house. You, 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 you sleep in with this man in, in this room and your children are on the other side of the wall. You don't know what these children are listening to. You don't even know this man. You, you know you ain't got no business sleeping with this man. You ain't married to him. And you don't even know this man. You shouldn't be sleeping with this man this quick. No way. But you're going to put your children in the mix. It's one thing for you to be a fool and to jeopardize yourself. But you're going to jeopardize innocence. If a woman is so desperate for a man, many men will use your children to seduce and deceive you. They'll play like they love them and make the kids fall in love with them. And then watch this is after you let this man in. You haven't had any boundaries around your children. Now, you know, the children love the man and all this kind of thing. And now you figuring out, you know, uh, he's a narcissist. The moment a man tries to use your kids, to get next to you, he must never be trusted. It's one thing when, you know, a relationship between a man and your children develops and evolves naturally on your terms. But you see a man just pushing his way into your children. Oh, no, no, no. That, that's a red flag. And you're supposed to immediately lose all attraction for this brother because he's dangerous. 
If you look in Psalms 127 verses 3 and 4, it says, Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. They are a blessing to you. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. What does a, what does a, a man do with arrow? He shoots it far away from himself into the future. That is, that is your purpose in your children's lives. You cannot allow anything to jeopardize that. Your children have to be a hard boundary. Now that means, and I've kind of alluded to it, do not expose random men to your kids. A man not supposed to be meeting your children. You just met this man last week. You know, you, you, don't, you don't know this man. You haven't tested this man. And here you bringing this man up in here, running this man all up in front of your children and everything. Your children are not supposed to have the memory of you bringing a bunch of men around. Now you grown, you know what I'm saying? And you know, we, we all have our issues and what have you, but man, at least be, be smart enough, be conscious enough not to leave an impression on your children that my mama had a bunch of men coming through the house. Your children get grown, they're not supposed to be telling their children, your grandma used to be getting it on. She had a bunch of men running through the house. See, because the impression on, on, the, child, on, the, on the mind of a child is not that these guys are just visiting. When they come to a certain age and they get to talking on the schoolyard, they thinking you slept with all of these guys. So now they got to process this in their own mind. Man, my mama sleep with a whole lot of folk. You're not supposed to expose your children to random men. If, if there's ever a reason, if there's any reason for a woman to stay single until a certain point, it's kids. A man, a man should be almost at the altar, you know, proposing before you bring that man into your children's lives. He should, he should be at a point where he's saying, okay, I want you to be my wife. You, you, all, you all should go through, should be going through counseling and somewhere in the mix you can begin to introduce the children. But you're not supposed to just be bringing Random men. That's one thing I don't understand about a lot of young women. Just bringing all of these random men all up in, in the midst of your children. Your first ministry is your family. Your children's memory of you must be virtuous. And what does virtue mean? Doesn't mean that you're virginal, but it means that you manage your uh, sexuality. And it means that you manage your image in a way that is self-respecting and just running a bunch of men through the house around your kids. I'm sorry, it's just not self-respecting. Hey, you ain't got to agree with me. I'm just, I'm just talking. You, you ain't got to agree with me. The Bible says in Proverbs 31, 27 and 28, talking about that virtuous woman. It says she looks well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. You want to live your life in front of your kids in a way that when they get old, they can say, man, you know, your, your children ought to seek God because of the way you live before them. Doesn't mean that you're perfect. None of us are. But it means that you have certain boundaries when it comes down to your children that your children are never going to. See anything sideways relative to you and men. You see, um, I said, number, letter A, do not expose random men to your kids. And here's letter B under this thing. Um, insist that no man impose himself onto your kids. You got, you got to tell a brother when he start, you know, trying to push up. No, 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 no. We're not doing that now. No, 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 no. My kid's over here. Don't don't come over here. No, 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 no. I don't want my children just meeting everybody. No, no, no. You got to insist on that without worrying about anybody's feelings, without worrying about running somebody off. Any man can't understand that. He don't need to be present. No way. Because predators will use your kids to seemingly impress you. And once you let down your guard, they will take advantage of the kids. There are a lot of guys that 
Well, use your kids because they know you are impressed by whoever you think loves your kids. And the whole thing is to get inside, make you think that they love your kids so that you fall in love with them. And then once they get in, now they're sexually abusing your kids, physically abusing your kids. You'd be amazed at how many children go through that because they have mothers who do not have boundaries, do not exercise wisdom in terms of dating. So your children must be a hard boundary. Number two, your money got to be a hard boundary. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know y'all saying this man won't get off of that. No, I'm not going to get off of it because it's absolutely ridiculous how y'all out here just being played. It's ridiculous how you got these 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 bombs that don't don't work, don't want to work around here wearing all of these name brands and don't have a job and living off of you and three other ladies down the block. And you sitting there just popping this gum looking crazy. You just, you know, but no wise self-respecting woman should ever allow a grown man she's trying to get to know to ask her for money. Because once the money boundary has been breached, there is very little hope of a healthy future. Because a feminine woman, you know, will always have to have a man that is a provider. And you're, in your desperation for a man, in your desperation for a relationship or whatever, you know what I'm saying? You, you feel like you can tolerate it. You, you want to pay, you know, you want to pay for a man. But, you know, once that gets old, once all of that wears off and you wake up and you're looking at this bum every day, this bum doesn't have a job. You out here hustling. You got a job and a couple of businesses. And this bum just sliding around with uh, wife beaters on and eating food all day long and won't even go get a haircut. Got to use your car to go wherever he want to go. All he's doing is just just, you know. It's sex. That's all you're getting out of that. You ain't getting, you, you paying for that. You, you, you out here paying for that. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna want that. A feminine woman will always have to have a man that is a provider. So when a man start talking like he, he wants you to give him some money. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. First Timothy five and eight says this, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So if you got a brother up in the church, don't want a job trying to get your money. The Bible says this dude is worse than, than an unbeliever. The heathens do better than this. And if you go to 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 3, verses 10 through 12, it says, therefore, even when we were with you, watch this, this we commanded you, Paul didn't play, that if any would not work, who's he telling me? He's about men right here. If any, any would not work, neither should <laughs> he eat. For we, we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. I was, you know, sitting, just trying to figure out how we got so many gossiping men now. Got men making big money off just gossiping all over the social media, just gossiping. Now, there was a time that gossiping was woman's activity. Now the dude's gossiping more. Well, he says, let me leave that alone. Verse 12, now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. You're not supposed to be feeding no grown man, paying for no grown man like he's your son. You, you know, red flags. Dude starts a conversation about your resources. Well, how much money you make? How much money you make? See, a real man don't care nothing about how much money you make. He really doesn't care how much money you make. A real man does not care how much money you make. You know why he doesn't care? It's because he plans on providing anyway. He don't care how much money you make. 
He, he, he ain't got no problem with you making money. He glad you making money. But he don't care how much money you make. He, any dude sitting there and he want, well, oh, what you make? What you do? What you do? Yeah, how much that pay? How much that pay? Hmm. Really? 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 I didn't know these things. And then let it be. Dude making suggestions about what you should or should not do with your money. See, this is a guy whose conversation is showing you that he's, he's trying to get his grimy little fingers into your pocketbook. Well, you know, I'm just, uh, let me hold something. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Your response to that is supposed to be, brother, I don't, I don't let no, I don't let no, no man hold nothing un unless I'm married to him. Uh -uh, I ain't let, I don't let no man hold nothing. I don't know. What you mean? Let you hold something. You're not supposed to just grin that off because you scared he going to leave. You need his behind up out of there. That's a bum. Any man ask a woman for money is a bum. That's supposed to be a hard boundary for you. I don't care how much money you make. You are not supposed to be tolerating a man that's coming there for your money. Period. Period. That's, I, be, I said period. You're not supposed to be tolerating no grown man. Your parents have worked themselves down to the bone to educate you and to put you in a position where you can be self-sufficient. And now you're going to take all of that investment they made in you and go and take care of a grown, rusty Negro that don't even want a job. And then scared you're going to lose him. What are you losing? <laughs> I don't want to lose him. I don't want to lose him. You need a checkup from the neck up. <sighs> now here's, here's the third, here's the third hard boundary. Triggers. Your triggers, your personal triggers have to be a boundary to you. If you love yourself, when a man is constantly Pushing your buttons and triggering you, it is not a mistake. It's, it's an intentional breach of an emotional boundary. This man is attempting to render you emotionally enslaved or subjugated. It's not, a, it's not, it's not a mistake. Nobody triggers you every day by mistake. Anybody that's triggering you every day and really has a love for you is going to pay attention to your response and your energy. And they will soon learn, do this, don't do that. People that love you, learn you. People that love you, learn you. Anybody that's around you every day and constantly triggering you does not love you. There's, there's a diabolical agenda. And you have to be able to say within yourself, this man is triggering me. And this is a personal boundary that I cannot play with. I cannot afford to have anybody around me. Tri oh, but you know, you know, RC, uh, he don't know what he be doing. He say things and he don't know what he be saying. Let me show you how this works. Um, if you go to first Kings 19 verses two and three, here you see the prophet Elijah who's just defeated the, the hundreds of false prophets of, of Jezebel. Now Jezebel impacts him intentionally without even physically being present. Listen to what the Bible says in first Kings 19, two and three. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me. And more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah and left his servant there. Jezebel says, okay, you, you killed my false prophets, but I'm going to do the same thing to you tomorrow. And it triggered something in him that brought him to a place of panic and he started running. But notice something, listen to what the Bible says. So let the gods do to me and more also, 
if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, she sent a message to him and he saw something. You see, there are people that study you and they know exactly what it takes to trigger you. What is a trigger? A trigger is anything that's said or done that brings you back to a point in your past where it was painful or hurtful and you see it all over again. Any, any man that is constantly doing that to you, your triggers have to be hard boundaries because the same man that, that seems to be so loving and perfect can make you anxious at the same time just with a text message. And it can seem like he's trying to be nice, but and you say, oh, he don't know what he does. He knows exactly what he's doing. It's your responsibility to guard your own heart. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 4 and 23. It says, keep vigilant, watch over your heart. That's where life starts. When somebody is playing with your heart, it is your responsibility to love yourself enough to put distance between you and that person. Anybody that triggers me does not have access to me. Once I figure out that you trigger me, you don't have access to me. And I'm not making no apologies and I'm not doing a whole lot of explanations to you about why you can't access me anymore. You just not going to do it. I'm sorry. I don't want to talk to you. I'm not answering your calls. I'm not changing my number, but I'm not answering your calls because you trigger the worst in me. Now, what does this look like when you, when you feel uneasy around a man? You know, I mean, he may be saying all the right stuff. He may go to the same church and he may claim to have this big career and he may look like he's just the ideal man. But there's something down on the inside of you that that just feels uneasy. There's a dead cat on the line, my old man would say. You, you got to learn to trust. You got to learn to trust the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. See, see, God loves you. He, you. You may not be you may not be all that with God, but God loves you. And God is always on the inside of you, steering you, even when you don't realize it. And when you when you had that thing working in you, uh, your intuition, that's what you call it. I call it your discernment. But you just you feel uneasy. Everything on the surface looks perfect, but there's an uneasiness down on the inside of you. You better run, Forrest, run. There's a boundary being breached. Let it be when a man makes you feel bad about yourself. Every time you get around this cat, he making you feel bad about yourself. You know, he, he some kind of way in some back back door kind of way. He's going to say something that makes you think less of you. If it's no more than admiring uh, your friend for for, you know, oh, she lost so much weight. She looks so good. That's the perfect size. Well, he know you not that size. So why did he say that's the perfect size? Well, he's triggering you. That was intentional. That's to make you feel bad about you. You know, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went by my, went by my, uh, went, went by my boy's house and his lady, his, his lady friend, uh, she, she work a job and, and she cook every day for him. Every day. I, I, I just thought that was so nice. That was so nice. You, you know, you don't be, I don't necessarily expect that out of you. Well, why is he saying that? He's triggering you. He's trying to make you feel bad about who you are. Comparing you to somebody else. And without, you know, without being able to be accused of comparing you, he's indirectly comparing you. And in your mind, he's putting you in competition with another sister that you probably don't even know. It's triggering you. That's a hard boundary. Once you discover that a man is doing this, it ain't really nothing else to talk about. Let us see. A man sometimes directly goes for your insecurities. I mean, he just go for it. You know, he you go to talking up under your clothes, talking about what you look like, who, who will never... Uh, who will never want you, nobody ever, you better try to be happy with me because ain't nobody else going to want you with, with this, 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 and that. You know, you, you know, you don't, you know, you're not all of that. I'm just tolerating you anyway. Go straight for the juggler. You know what you're supposed to do? 
you're supposed to put this man out of your presence. And he is never supposed to have access to you again. You're not supposed to be crawling back there talking about, you sorry, you sorry. Yeah, he's sorry. He's not apologetic, but he is sorry. <laughs> another, another hard boundary is your family, number four. See, a toxic man will insert himself into your family and into your friendships uninvited. Quite often, the purpose of this is to manage you through family and the peer pressure of friends. Now, this may also be for the purpose of painting a false positive image of himself to your family. So that when, when, when you discover who he really is, it'll be hard for his family or for your family to believe he's really that guy. So they'll say, oh, you show sure, girl, you need to pray about that. That's such a nice man. That's such a nice guy. Yeah. That's a demon spirit many times. Yeah, but they'll use your family. This person will... You know, you got your family has to be a, a hard boundary. You're not supposed to just, you know, you you know, I'm over here at my uh, uh, family cookout. You're not supposed to be popping up just all willy nilly. I don't know you like that. We ain't on that level yet. We dating. You ain't supposed to just come up in here introducing yourself and all this kind of thing. You know, you, you, you know where I'm at with my girlfriends and all and you popping up. No, 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 no. You are a stalker, brother. You're a stalker. It, you know, we, we read the, the story of Amnon and Tamar the other day uh, in the Bible where David's son fell in love or in lust with his own sister Tamar. It was his half sister. And it's found right there in 2 Samuel 13, verses 6 through 9, but I'll just kind of tell you the story. Uh, Amnon concocts a scheme. And says to his father, he, he wants he, he's lusting after his sister so bad, he, he's, he's going to rape her. Uh, he says to his father, I'm sick, I'm sick. Can you tell my sister, come fix me something to eat? And David, you know, thinking it's just, you know, things are normal. He sends Tamar to go and bring the boy something. She actually brought him something to eat, fixed it for him. And then he puts everybody out and he says, could, could you bring me in the room and feed me, feed me? And when she came in there, he took and he raped her. See, well, see, that's that's an extreme uh, illustration of how a toxic man will use your family to position you because your family can can move you around. Your friends can get you in positions that, you know, a man you just recently met can't get you in. But he'll use your family and your friends to position you. So when you start seeing a man making moves on your family and friends before you invited him into that realm, that's a red flag. That's a boundary being breached. Number five, the, I call it the intimacy boundary. You know, uh, the touchy feely dude. You know, you know, y'all just been on a date or two, and now all of a sudden he he reaching to hug you and all this. He don't know. He don't know what your what your comfort level is with that. Ain't no man supposed. No man is supposed to uh, move in for any kind of physical contact with a woman on any level uh, without being invited into that space. And 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 a, and a brother knows when he's invited. You know, any man is just reaching to hug you and even kissing you on the cheek. He don't know. He don't know that you you good with that. He don't know what your history is. You, 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 you don't you don't know what kind of, you know, triggers you have. And, and he just just breaching the intimacy boundary. When a man does not respect your personal space, it is it is a blatant. It is blatantly disrespectful. And in Proverbs 7 and 21, it talks there about with her much fair speech. This is a, a fast woman that's seducing a young man. She caused him to yield. The young man yielded with the flattering of her lips. She forced him. See, you got to be careful with a man or, you know, that is overly complimentary about how beautiful you are. 
And then, you know, right after the compliments, he's always, it's always followed up with him reaching for you, inappropriately touching you. Mm -mm. And sometimes you just let it go. You know, oh, it's innocent. No, it ain't innocent. If you don't feel, if, you, if you're not ready for that and you don't feel comfortable with that, you're supposed to be woman enough to say to this man, brother, I ain't ask you, I, di I didn't tell you it was okay for you to touch me like that. Now, you know, I don't mean no harm, but I mean what I say. I didn't tell you that it was okay for you. Don't, don't touch me like that unless I invite you into that kind of situation, sir. See, because if, 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 uh, the, the thing about a touchy-feely dude is if you let this go, if, if, you, if you let him grab you around the waist and all of this kind of stuff, next time he's going to slide it down, you know, on, on, you know, you know what I'm talking about. He's going to slide it down there and he's going to be rubbing you down there. And next thing you know, he's going to you, gonna pat you on, your, on your behind and, all, and it's just going to go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. Because here you have a man that does not respect intimate boundaries. <sighs> and number six, and finally, and I'm out of here, privacy boundaries. Privacy boundaries. You know, you, you got a cat just popping up at your job. You just went out with this guy two or three times and he's popping up at your job unannounced. He, he's popping up at your house unannounced. Picking your phone up off of the dinner table, looking all through your phone, looking through your pictures. You don't know what you got up in there. He breached in privacy boundaries. You know, Lisa and I have been married for going on 28 years, and we don't go through one another's phones. Now, she asked me for my phone. I give it to her. She's she got to take care of business on it. But ain't no sitting around going through no phones. She went out of town. She, she left her phone or one of her phones with me for me to, to do some, some other stuff with and all of that. But, but we respect boundaries. Even, even being married. Come on now. I'm not all up, all up in her conversation, ear hustling. Trying to, who's she talking to? Now, if she, you know, she, she loud and she says something that startles me out. What was that about? You know, but privacy. Everybody, everybody that's going to be a healthy individual has to have a measure of privacy. And when you have a man that does not respect your privacy, that that guy has a mind to enslave you. That guy, in most cases, has a mind to enslave you. You look around, you won't have any personal space. You will not have any private time because you did not enforce this hard boundary from the start. And so there you have it. You know, there you have it, man. Um, I believe that these are six. I'm certain that they can be added to. But I think that these six things, every wise and queen conscious single woman must enforce in the process of dating a man. I'm telling you, dudes that do not have good intentions do not want to tolerate boundaries. And when a woman enforces those boundaries, it weeds out the pretenders from the contenders. The fakes from the authentic. And so there you have it. I hope you got something out of this. Now, I want to pray for you because I really sense, I really sense that there are some of you that are in situations right now that you know it's not right. You know it's not right. And it's dangerous for a woman to be in a relationship that she knows is not right. You don't know what a man is capable of. And so now my prayer for you is that the spirit of God will give you the strength, the inner strength to break this thing, give you the wisdom to involve the right people in your life that will stand behind you. And that the spirit of God will cause you to rekindle your personal vision. Now, Father, as I have spoken these things, my prayer is that you will move upon each and every one of them by your power and by your spirit. A lot of them, I can hear them saying now, 
Well, I haven't been right with God in a long time. God, make them know tonight that you love them. Let them sense your presence. Let them sense the peace. Glory to God. Let them sense the peace that comes along with your presence and give them the strength and the wisdom and the clarity to move forward with their lives. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Now listen, I need you to go and um, go to my website, rcblakes.com, sign up for my mailing list. And um, while you're there, check out all of my online programs. I think uh, one or more of them may bless you. Go to Amazon, pick up any or all of my books while you're there. Those of you that need counseling, there's a link in the description for better help counseling. Those of you that need counseling, we have a relationship with better help counseling. And um, if you if you need counseling and you use that link, it'll afford you 10 percent off of the cost of their counseling. And they in turn will make a deposit into RC Blake's ministries for the referral, obviously. Now, um, I want to thank all of you that have sown into our lives. We, we truly thank God for you. I thank God for those of you that. You know, just love Lisa and I and love what we do and support us financially and, you know, support us with your outpouring of words of encouragement. We we don't take those things lightly. I mean, from all around the world, it means a lot to us. And so um, I think that's about it. But let me say this for those of you that have been contemplating. Well, first of all, those of you that are going to be in my in our new Mordecai mission mentoring class, mentoring group, 12 week mentoring group. Every Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, we will meet. This begins on April the 24th. We have about another uh, about another two weeks of registration for that. And then the, the doors will be closed. We already have a, a good number in there. I'm really I'm really satisfied with, but I'm going to leave registration open for another two weeks for those of you that have been thinking about it, but maybe you didn't get, didn't get around to it. You got another two weeks to be in this class. This is the fourth uh, Mordecai mission session, 12 weeks every Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. You and I we will deal with uh, inner healing, self-discovery, and self-development. Those are the three pillars of the Mordecai mission. And I'm gonna teach you every week and then we'll have Q and A and you'll get a chance to, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. What a wonderful, wonderful experience. So those of you that are interested in that, make certain that you look in the description as well for the link to be able to get to registration. Well, I love you. I thank God for you. I appreciate you with all of my heart. Until next time, you are on top and you're going higher. God has more in store for you. So guess what? I will see you at the top. God bless you. Until next time. We here at RC Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. RC and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blakes Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top. Have you ever wondered what it'll be like to be mentored and taught by R.C. and Lisa? To be a part of an exclusive group with opportunities to ask questions to R.C. directly? There is a program called Mordecai Mission. It may be the opportunity you're looking for. Mordecai is a 12-week program conducted on Zoom by R.C. and Lisa. The program is named Mordecai because it was Mordecai who mentored Esther into her reign as queen. R.C. has been called the King of Queens. His passion for empowering women is like that of Mordecai. 
The program is for women seeking spiritual and emotional healing as well as a sense of purpose and a return to self-love. It's biblically based and spiritually empowered. It is roughly an hour of teaching done by RC. It then moves into Q&A. The program is based on three pillars. One, inner healing. Two, self-discovery. And three, self-development. The program runs for 12 weeks straight. Meetings are at the same time every weekend. The meetings are about 90 minutes to two hours. To be a part of the next group, go to www.rcblakes.com and register. Seats are limited. Pray about it. And if you feel a witness in your heart, don't procrastinate. Go ahead and register.